Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Big Deck Energy, your below deck semicolon sailing yacht podcast. I am your first mate, Sasha Joseph, taking over, baby. I have the keys today for our fearless captain because he's not here, obviously. But don't worry, everyone. He's not gone because, you know, he inhaled too much COVID or anything like that. But instead, he's just out having fun without hot tubs. All right. So while the captain's away, I had to bring in a, a conductor, the conductor of the Hot Mess Express. Puya is here. Welcome, Puya. Welcome to Below Deck. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, you know, from the railroad to the seas. Uh, I'm on another mode of transport that is very messy, but I'm very happy that you uh, asked me to come on because getting to watch this, uh, get familiarize myself with this franchise, learning about it, watching the last five episodes, I've been having a good time. So I'm very happy oh, to talk so about good. it. So good to hear. Like, yeah, how do you feel about it? Like, do you have any faves jumping out already? Or, you know, like, are we just like vibes only? Okay, so first of all, I really like that it's 43 minutes yes. because Lord knows 90 Day has decided for whatever reason every episode needs to be an hour and a half. It does not need to be an hour and a half. So I'm very happy about that arrangement. Second, um, we were talking offline before we got on and you were telling me you really like Gary. I don't really think How Gary's my you? guy. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I it's interesting because I feel like I'm still learning f about them and I'm mm -hmm. still getting to know them. But I really like Daisy. I yeah. really like yeah. her a lot. Um, and Colin is my pick from the guys. I really like Colin a lot. So, yeah, those two. You, you did the right thing, obviously. Here's the Nailed thing it. I will say and we'll, we'll talk about it, obviously. But Gary and Glenn were are comma were fla fan favorites and they're waffling i'll just say that all right so they, they used to be fun mm, you know that's all i'll say for now but if you all listening watching are also enjoying the podcast make sure you hit the subscribe on our all new bravo feed okay it's the bravo tv rehap ups feed check it out leave us a five-star review we currently have 10 ratings maybe before next week could we get to 20 i feel like it's possible come on everyone help us out all right and i do want to like name that people left us some reviews so i'm gonna I'm read it out loud we got one from jane 2520 and says the below deck shows are the only ones i watch on bravo so i'm really glad to listen to rob and sasha covering sailing yacht their dynamic is really fun and below deck down and their favorite is below deck down under I, I think that's a great one so i'm seriously hoping we cover season two when it airs listen let the boss man know we should be covering all of this, okay? Because it when you leave us reviews, he'll know. Ratings and reviews. Leave it. Help us out, everyone. All right. But with that, Puya, I think it's time. I think let's get into the episode. Let's. Yeah. So listen, we start let we start going balls deep because Gary and Mads are hooking up in the damn hot tub. And that is your introduction to episode five. Yeah, they're fully in this hot tub to the point where Gary is underwater at one point in this makeout session. And he immediately says, well, I listen, I can't breathe underwater, which yet yeah, none of us can. Less making out as well. Yeah, I will say I don't. Yeah, it's not really that fun in pools. Make it, you know, like whatever. All right. Maybe if you're that wasted, it is. But I, I cannot figure these two out because Gary gives like wish Aquaman and he's like, oh, I thought I was Aquaman, but looks like I have zero gills and it's smoking probably ruined his lungs. I don't know. But either way, it very much looks like they're they're happy. They're making out. And Rob did call this out. But Alex is so effed up that he decides to like put, put up the baby gate. I know it has a better name, but the baby gate on his bed, uh, the the little like railings. Oh, the, yeah, 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 yeah. So he doesn't <laughs> fall into, you know, Captain Glenn's arms. But then he comes out and he's making a salad, which I was like, what a drunk, smart person. Because eating a salad when you're drunk, chef's kiss. I mean, listen, this was a, a blackout meal of choice. I could <laughs> tell you I am not smart when I am this level of intoxicated. No. 
if it ain't fried, I'm not eating it. You know what I mean? So good choice, but I've definitely seen this person before who's like <laughs> clearly not awake, but conscious enough to be sitting up and eating. This man was in another universe on his own. 1000%. Like, he didn't know what was going on. And then, of course, our guy Colin showed up and he's like, y are you OK? Like, what's going on? You know, Because Colin is so messy this season, but in the best way. Like, he just wants to know all the tea. So he's trying to figure it out. And then the line of the season, me thinks, because he said Farquhar is up there with Matt. Yeah, Farquaad is up there with Mads one on one. Um, and then cutting your lunch. That is a new one for me. Yeah. So last time we got the like, I don't want to cut down the trees, right? Or I don't want to some version of that. I don't remember exactly what Gary said. So yeah, these like all of these uh South African, what is is Colin South African too? I think so. Um, or whatever, these other worlds. Not other world, other country, like sayings. I'm obsessed with it. Maybe it's Australian. Me being the typical American, not knowing the difference. Here I am. But all of them are just wild because Colin could care less. And he's just like, okay, sleep well. And then we get this confessional. Leaving a girl <laughs> in a hot tub with Gary is like leaving a banana in front of a monkey and not expecting them to eat it. Don't disrespect monkeys like that, Colin. <laughs> yeah, are we calling Mads a banana? <laughs> like, I don't love that. That's what I'm saying. And low key, this whole show, this franchises will like be a little bit misogynistic. It'll be like, haha, funny misogyny, you know, or whatever. So I don't appreciate it because it's not like Alex wasn't drunk as a damn skunk. And that is the only reason this happened. I love that. Yeah, it's a good point you bring up because I love that the two deckhands in Alex and Chase are essentially getting the sad boy edit. The I'm listening to Drake at three in the morning edit of we really like Mads and we, you know, we don't know who she's going to pick. And then Gary's like. Oh, okay, uh, Mr. Steal Your Girl in the building. I'm gonna, I'm gonna outlast you in this hot tub like it's a damn immunity challenge <laughs> until you go away, and then I'm going to put the move on Mads. And then Mads is like, "I wanted to have fun," and I'm like, "You do you. That's that's acceptable to me because again, you are not anyone's person. So do whatever you want to do." Um, it's it's interesting the way because I'm coming in completely fresh. Yes. I don't have the lore of Captain Glenn who to, is funny to me because in every time they go out and party and do their thing, this man is just having a one-on-one -on -one date with the snack cabinet, apparently. <laughs> That's all he's doing. Yes. Um, but just learning everyone's like who, what character they're supposed to be on the show. And Gary is really told as an alpha who is in charge. It's his way or no way. And also he gets what he wants is the vibe yeah. I get. He must smell really well because ain't no way the way this man looks right. Like I don't get it. So it must be that he's like, you know, has some pheromones that are getting the people going. Cause I don't get it. Or Mad said it best, right? He was there. She wanted to have fun. So yeah. been there, Maddie. I get it. I get it. Mads. All right. <laughs> but the, the next morning is what kills me because, of course, we get Lucy hitting herself for the 17,000th time. And then Colin goes, so everyone, who hooked up with whom? Colin, you know damn well what happened in the bunks. But Gary starts his own, I don't think so. I don't think I did anything. He was not that drunk. He knew exactly what he was doing. Yeah. Him. Yeah. I mean, listen, Colin comes in acting like it doesn't know anything it is this has happened i have been calling right where you've heard some of the shady stuff that went down last night but you don't want to come in and say i know this happened because then that person will, be, will tell me everything you know and they could potentially switch it up or find a narrative you're like what happened i don't have any idea because you want to have all the information so this is a key king move from calling uh gary clearly doesn't want to put it out there that he did um, I don't know how much I buy what Gary's selling later on when he implies that he feels bad. It's like, stop it. You do not feel bad. You feel nothing.
Yeah, and and I was all out here in these Reddit streets. You know, shout out to Reddit. They did post the podcast uh, in the below deck Reddit, and they they said it best, right? It feels like he's almost peacocking because he missed night one. He didn't get to like establish himself as the alpha, mm -hmm. which is why I feel like he's doing the absolute most. Yeah, for no reason. It felt – this came up a lot when he first got onto the boat. of like, oh, my mm -hmm. God, I missed night one. It's like, yeah, it doesn't matter. You're here now. It's like, but no, I missed the first charter. These two are doing whatever they want to do. They got to do it my way. This isn't right. Also, I feel like I came in and everyone's made their picks and I don't have anybody. But it seems like you don't care if anyone's made their picks, guy. So whatever. He gives zero. He's such a himbo. He like literally gives zero Fs about anything. And mm -hmm. I'm tired of him. All right. <laughs> but also, I have to say, I don't. Rob asked me this last time, but it's solidified where Lucy just feels like the odd person out of like hookups. And I don't know why. I think she's so nice. And more people should want to like be with her. Yeah, it feels like we see this on, on some shows as well, right? You know, you've seen this on Too Odd to Handle. Mm -hmm. You see this in Big Brother even where one person kind of becomes the the runaway, like, quote, top of the list yeah. for like three people. And they all are looking for the same person. So they won't move on to anyone else. And they'll shoot their shot with that person until that person's, quote, uh, again, off the market. Then you're like, okay. Let's move the radar. Oh, hey, you're you're here. Let's talk. I feel like that's where Lucy's going to come in here. Not as a, um, you know, not as a you are not attractive and, and w are, were never my choice, but more of a Mads is my choice, but Mads isn't happening. And now I'm more open to other stuff because in this scene, Chase does mention that he is done. He is done with the lady situation. And to Chase, I say, you're only lying to yourself. You are full of it. You are going to be never done with the lady situation, sir. He's lit. I'm telling you, our walking Eeyore, because he's just like, oh, they, they love Fabio. They don't. They might love the wish Fabio, because guess who hooked up with whom? That guy down there in your bunk, not the one outside cleaning the boat right now. I will say, um, I feel like Fabio ruined his own stuff. Um, I feel like he did his drinking got in his way. I think he would do Alex would do a lot better. I'd probably have a lot better of a shot with anybody. Had he just had one less drink or one less shot, I think he would have been in a good place. But the, the scene of this man in the hot tub, he was I was worried he was going to drown in there. He just he st slowly started sinking below water like, dude, get out. <laughs> go, go He's away. Such, but I that's the thing. I it was almost like he didn't know that he was sinking under the water. He was probably just like lo so lucid because he's a wasted yeah and, oh my god and then he's just like stumbling down the stairs i i don't understand it because why get this drunk if you are trying to you know seal the deal you get what i'm saying and mads was down that's yeah. what i think bothers me well i think this is the thing and again someone who's new to the franchise but you just spent two whole days essentially sober and on the job so it's almost like they said it's like you know as as and this is a weird comparison to make, but as a Muslim, when yeah. it's Ramadan and you're fasting, you're not eating. You're right. You're not eating. You're not drinking from sunset, sun uh, rise to sunset. Then at sunset, you're supposed to break your fast a little. But then between like 8 p.m. to midnight, it is a calorie zone of give me all the foods. I'm going ham. I'm going hard in the paint for no reason. And I feel like it's that right. They're not yep. drinking. They're not drinking for two days. Like, oh. That first beer is going to hit. That first shot's going to hit. And then before you know what, and they keep playing drinking games. Drinking games are a vehicle to two things, more drinking and kissing people. These are the <laughs> only two things drinking games do. Unless it's beer pong, then it's uh, bragging rights, pride, and some roasting. And but, some hookups. We don't know. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, you play a couple, oh, truth or dare, I dare you to kiss this person. Well, I dare you to take five shots. Like, what are we doing here? Of course, he's going to be knee-deep in a salad. Yeah, but then he's going to be knee-deep in a salad. He's not going to be, again, one knee less Knee-deep in Mads, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> one drink problem. less, and we could have a very, very, very attractive duo in Alex yes. and Mads.
I agree because I want this to still happen. And here's the thing. I, I know no spoilers, but I feel like it will happen. I think that's where we're headed. Yeah, because we do get Alex knowing, like, listen, I know I messed up. Like, I drank too much, blah, blah, blah. And then they they have their, like, I'm fake being mean to you where they're doing the, like, I don't even like you that much. I was, like, just kiss. Very high it's school. Time. Very high school. Yeah, come on. Let's just do it. All right. Let's do it. But also, throughout the whole episode, Puya, it feels like Mads was, like, going out of her way to talk to Alex more than he – more than anyone else, but also more than he was trying with her. Well, that's the thing, right, is that before the makeout happens, Gary spills the beans and says, listen, my deckhands, they both want you. Um, and, you know, they they really like you, whatever, whatever. But, but F them. They're just deckhands and then makes out with her. So she knows now. Oh, he really likes me. Oh, he was the last one to leave here. Oh, he's gonna find out sooner or later that this happened. I kind of feel bad, but also in my in my read, I feel like she's also like, but I'm kind of feeling him too. And this is the confirmation I I didn't have. But then also now I've kissed this guy, and and there's eight of us, and it's kind of a weird dynamic now that two of us have kissed. Uh, it's never weird. They've all had sex with each other. Like, well, this in past adds ones. up. This yes. is. I will say this feels the closest a show has come to feeling like Jersey Shore to me. Oh, um, that's high praise. Right. When it's like, it's like the same six, seven people, in this case, eight people, they party together. In this one specifically, they're on the, sh they're on the yacht together. There's no one else. So. And they have they to work. <laughs> yeah. Can I ask you, do they hook up with people from off the boat ever? Yes and no. So they they'll make out with people at bars and stuff, but I don't know that anymore. At least they bring they can bring them back. Like I think it's very much like it has to be off the boat. I've definitely seen people like get you know dropped off. Like well, they'll walk to the boat and then you mm -hmm. know on the like walkway they'll like say their goodbyes. But no one has come on well, to the boat. I would say that. I mean, I I don't answer this probably because I'm I'm hoping to see it on the show, but. Mm -hmm. These quarters are pretty tiny for for two people to share the same bed. So Oh, it'll happen. You'll see. But there's like you're telling me Alex is going to hook up with someone on top of uh, Captain Glenn? That's going to happen. So may okay, maybe not with Captain Glenn. That's the only safe cabin. But <laughs> what What would you do if I told you Again, Captain uh, season 2, Captain Glenn's roommate, uh, Jean-Luc known f boy uh did hook up he's six four okay and he slept in that top bunk oh my god yeah so that you know was a source of drama of course because he literally couldn't sleep and <laughs> then he did have sex with danny uh one of the stews and actually they conceived a baby uh on the show yeah on and the yacht yes and they that he didn't claim for a while uh and then anyway so they had sex and it was in a bunk and then of course they would go to like the guest rooms so that does happen they do go to the guest rooms but last season like below deck proper they not only were they hooking up in those cat in the small uh beds a twin bed they were hooking up in the top bunk while someone was sleeping under this, you know, scenes like this get seen either on below deck or at a college dorm room. There are yes. no other places this is going down. I remember my roommate was very absentee in my mm -hmm. freshman year. So I was blessed. I didn't have to deal with uh, roommate issues. But I had a friend who consistently would just be hanging out with people till like four in the morning because he would get sexiled from his room. And he's like, yeah, I just got to wait for, I don't remember what the roommate's name was to like finish his uh, mm. business. It's like, bro, it's been four nights this week. <laughs> like, well, are you just going to not stay at your room? You're paying for this room too, you know? Um, so be, be courteous to your roommates, folks. Yeah, it's like the, the sock works once a month. All right. Like it can't keep. Once working. a month? It, you're not going to leave me out in my room more than that. I'll tell you that for free. And and so then you're also doing you're also abiding by the once a month then right it, it, both of I you. I never. I don't know what See? you're talking about. That is some hypocritical stuff. No, no, right I'm just saying Sasha. I've never done anything. So oh, I don't know what true. You're about. Sorry, sorry. I, I forgot for a second. Yes. 
I All actually right. did not have a roommate or a suite mate. It was must be nice, Sasha. Angry. Must be nice. <laughs> no, only because I lived on the international floor. But listen, let me tell you, for your college player ways, that's the way to go, everyone. Just yeah, the the noise. Asia wealth uh direction. <laughs> no, I just didn't have one. There was two beds. <laughs> oh, your roommate never showed up. Yes. A must nice. Just a <laughs> Just put two beds together of a big ass bed instead. Nice. Listen, you gotta do what you gotta do. That's all <laughs> <Yeah>. I'll say. <laughs> and we caught our RA with a guy. So Ooh. we never got in trouble <laughs> after. Scandalous. You're like, listen, I know something. I just exactly. do. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, good times. That's all I'll say. Freshman year. Thumbs up. <laughs> anyway, so all of this is going on. And then of course, Mads has to tell Lucy the next morning what happened and the ick that Lucy gives Maddie to figure out that this happened. I'm obsessed with Lucy. Please, will you be my friend? <laughs> I love that she's like, that was very obvious. Very, yeah. very obvious that this went down. I know. And Mads does say, you know, she does wish that it was Alex. And not Lucy, but here we are, baby. You, not Lucy. What am I saying? It, Alex, not <laughs> Gary. But here we are, everyone. We love to see it. And then before, and this is all, everyone, before the charter guests come on. Okay, this is all in the morning, like before twelve p.m. All of this. Yeah, I'm you're tired. nursing a hangover before the job takes over once more. <laughs> None of them have any shame. And that's my favorite thing about this. Uh, <laughs> and it doesn't matter what season, what people. They're all like this. So then we do get a Gary and Mads talk where Mads does say, hmm, I don't know what you're talking about. I think we ignore a queen, a damn queen. <laughs> I've only once been in a situation like this and I've been like, please don't ever talk to me again. I don't want to think about it. It didn't happen. We're moving on. That's it. You have the memory like, of that night, mistake, and that's please. it. Yeah, yeah, like you were lucky enough to be in my presence. <laughs> like, weird move on. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, she's like, I don't want to cause drama, and I really don't just don't care to talk about it. I feel that Gary has never met someone that is not wanting to engage with him. Usually, he's the one that has to be like, I messed up. Back off don't bother you know like mm -hmm. professional leave like i'm your boss i did hook up with you but now i want to hook up with the others too so please boundaries he's never i felt like got a taste of his own medicine yeah so let's I, again I'll, i think all of this is like adding to his like bruised ego and oh, he's definitely. taking it out on daisy and i don't know appreciate it so now uh <laughs> chef's kiss before we even get to the charter right we do get a colin and daisy moment where colin's laying down and daisy's like on not on top of him but you know close and they're just talking about who they want to hook up with who they don't and they're both like no i don't want to hook up daisy's like listen alex that was a mess I took the L, let it be. I don't want to make it happen. Like, I don't want to talk about it no more. And Colin, being the grown man that he is, you know, says the stews are too young for me, even though him and Gary are the same age and or similar. And says, well, Gary you know, called himself the creepy uncle in this episode. And I thought, does he not have any shame? I would, I would, ne first of all, I would never want to even think that I'm that guy, but also I would never say that about myself in any capacity. That is a yikes moment for me. Because he has no, like, just hang it up, my guy. Hang it up. <laughs> but he can't. He just, like, falls. He's like, oops, I fell in to a girl. That's him, I feel. <laughs> and I don't know if you've seen the trailer, so maybe I won't ruin it for you. But you I have seen the next time on. Yeah, but there's they have teased something big. I'll just Ooh. say that. I don't know if you want to be spoiled. I listen, tell me. I'm gonna watch yes, so. Colin and Daisy hook up in one of the beds. <laughs> Yay! I'm I'm down. That I yes. ship them. They're my yeah. two favorites. I ship it. 
Exactly. So they do hook up. So that's why I think people are like with bated breath watching this because she's like, again, it just feels very like sexual tension y because they're very much like, well, I'm not, hook- yeah, this is too young. And then there's you. And then they both like giggle about it. So I, I just felt like, did something happen before we got onto the boat? Because how does Colin and Daisy happen? I can't wait. I can't mm-hmm. not wait. I, I it's going to be a good time. Happen. Yeah, so they do hook up. That's why when you were like, how do they hook up in beds? You'll see. You'll be very surprised. I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, so all of this, again, Mads also talks to Alex, whatever. And Alex does make a gross comment saying, um, we've all got a little bit of first officer in us. But you literally. Oh. <laughs> They just kissed Alex. Relax with your sad boy nonsense. Listen, he likes models with mommy issues. Mads is not that. Or daddy issues, whatever. So not that. So he doesn't like it. My <laughs> and God. then have you, you are very much in love um, with your partner, with Liana. Yes. Would you ever hold her leg like you're holding a hand? What do you do mean? You- Remember when Gary um, put his hands through Aisha's leg? Like through the toes? Yes. This is, again, night before Charter, everyone. Okay, so here's the thing. It doesn't... It's not easy to do. Yeah. It's not easy to put every finger through every... In between every toe. So, And it's very uncomfortable for both people. So, no. Yeah, I was just like... this weird like this should be on only feet or something like pay people pay money for this like no but also she has a man that's weird i don't think any man should be holding my like holding his hand i don't know holding my feet whatever the semantics is <laughs> of all of this but then Puya, we get that she used to be in a circus what is the chef you know what what they be doing in small town Australia? That's what I have to know. Because we get a python story last week where her dad cut off the head of a python. And now we're finding out she was in a circus because she was a contortionist. Spaghetti circus. So like, what what you be doing, my girl? I just, Experience in the world. Doing a whole bunch of different stuff. And you know Gary wished that she was single in that moment. Because he's like, contortionist? What did you say? That's like his buzzword. <laughs> if you say it three times, <laughs> click your feet, he shows up. <laughs> God. He's like, boom. <laughs> yeah. It's your turn with me. Oh, God. Ew, ew, ew. Anyway, then we do get a preference sheet meeting, which what did you feel about these things um, where the guests just like go in all it's... their whims and fantasies? Okay, so it's so funny to me because the first time I saw the, the preference sheet meeting, it felt like watching a spy movie and the <laughs> assassins being given the target is like, all right, the primary this week is John. And this he is a serial entrepreneur celebrating his new book. And I'm just like, what are you going to murder them on this boat? Like, why are you talking? Like, it's so prof- – but, but it's a job, so it's obviously going to be professional. But then seeing a cheat sheet with everyone's picture and name and what they like and don't like, I thought, okay – Clearly, I'm in a way lower uh, bank account uh, balance because they've sat there and given a full profile of themselves to these people so that they can provide the best service. And I've never I think the most anytime I provided that much information about myself has either been for immigration purposes or to (laughs) apply to university. It's never been anything else. Um, So I was like, this is a lot. This is a lot. You don't have, like, now, because of Below Deck, my husband and I, like, have these, like, delusions, I will say not dreams, of grandeur where we're like, oh, yeah, what would our, like, preference sheet be? And I realized I would be the biggest pain because I'd be like, I keep kosher, but I also only really like Indian food (laughs) and this and that. Oh, they would hate me. They would hate me. I still don't think you would be as specific as this preference sheet. I feel like this was the most specific like two people in the party are vegetarian or vegan and then everyone else wants a steak night so 
do these and two things. And gluten free, dairy free, and dairy free. Uh, yeah. All the free. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like this one was probably the biggest task for uh, Aisha in the kitchen yes. to uh, to make make do with. But she didn't seem too pressed about it. No, which is no, good. we've we've had again. I talk about this person a lot, but we have had someone that wanted not the primary, but a friend of the primary that wanted gold on everything, all foods, the gold flakes. And it wasn't the primary, just one of the no. one of the bougie guests of the primary. Yeah, get you your, could tell. Get, get they your were own yacht. <laughs> get your own yacht. She was just trying to, you know, like milk it for all its worth. It was a hot mess. But yes, yeah, so we do get all of this. Um, you know, the this uh primary, particularly John, was um like billed as the the douche of the season, but I'm not seeing it yet. I'll say that. Where I feel like he did have some moments, but I think they were a little jokey when he's like, I'm on a boat, mother effer. Like, I think that was all a it's joke. just, it's very bro. And I don't, and I don't think bro yeah. equals douche necessarily. Um, because they really did want him, you to think, because as if Mads had a confession where she's like, Oh, he seems like a typical douchebag, yes, but he seemed nice with all his friends, like, one of you know, checking up on his friends, making sure everyone mm -hmm. was drinking, being very kind, being like messing around with the with the uh the crew and, yes. and just was good energy mm -hmm. so obviously if you compare him to the other two charters yes maybe the douchiest sure. but even then i feel like of what we've seen so far i wouldn't even say the most problematic of the three charters yeah so. Car we had a karen we had a literal karen on charter one so please everyone <laughs> Get, get, no. Listen, Charter One didn't even get to experience the open sea, so I'm not gonna be too mad at them. So apparently they did, um, but oh. on Glenn's private boat, they just didn't show it for some reason. Okay, I don't Glenn, know why. Yeah, Mr. Multiple Yachts, get out of exactly. here. Exactly, like Glenn, get your own cabin first, then talk. <laughs> Imagine being the captain. You got to share the cabin with one of these degenerates. Like, wh why? And every time the person with Glenn is the most hot mess drunk. I mean, of course, they got to make it matter. I'm just has Glenn ever joined up on the post charter activities? No, no. None of the captains do. They is can. This like a, is this like a code of ethics type situation? Yeah, I, me thinks. Me thinks. So. Okay. Well, I think it's for the best, but I wouldn't be mad at seeing Glenn just partying kind of being low-key but you know he is relatable content with the midnight snacks so what do yeah, i know we, we moved into that phase of our life unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. everyone's like, out not. instagram look at me bottle service i'm here like okay if i put some peanut butter on this biscuit <laughs> that'd be pretty that'd be pretty good I'd, I'd do that with a coffee maybe but it's too late for maybe a decaf at 11 p.m okay that we're, would hit. we're leo when that meme of him like being like I'm watching yeah. them, but when we see Glenn, <laughs> yeah, it's like that's the guy we we relate to most. Yeah, my uh, my, well, I've never had a hot tub makeout phase, but those days be over, no matter yeah. what. Would recommend, <laughs> so. but 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 not on below. No, but you head. don't know because you don't do any of that. No, stuff, so. mom, I don't do anything. I'm such a good child. You're so lucky to have me. Uh, but also, okay, now this. This is where we're getting crazy, everyone. And I'm getting in my frustration. I'm because ready. Because <laughs> now, all right. So now it's charter guest time, right? We're getting close to it. And Glenn says, listen, um, we do need anything that requires a tender, right? Tender or beach, as in guests off the boat. We need an interior person on, period. End so of that's story. anyone that's not deckhand or Gary? So, but yeah, the three, so Daisy, Lucy, or Mads, basically, that's it, have to be on. Okay. With, yeah, with the decks, which is the outs, yeah. yeah, which is the guys. So one of the girls, not the chef, has to be on at all times. And this is like, I feel like Gary's some like sick kink that he just like wants to embarrass Daisy because she's like pushing back because she's saying listen it's just serving wine and beer it's not specialty cocktails it's not a whole thing so why can't someone on deck just do it and and, and they'll put it together it's just they don't want to have to lose a person because they have so much work to do on the boat so why and Glenn just like can't get it together because they like smirk at each other, Glenn and Gary. And then Gary's like, it looks more professional. Why? I will never understand this. 
Right. I mean, it's, I guess it's more professional when you consider the fact that, you know, Gary's pretty much just chilling with the guests at that point. Yeah, someone who's on the clock and doing it differently does seem professional. I agree with that part if you're looking at it that way. But I also, the terminology was a little bit tough for me to learn, but you just explained it, so I get it now. But just watching that scene later where Daisy's getting a billion uh, Mm. requests and orders and, and requirements to do, I was like, yeah, the extra hand would be great here, especially when then they cut to the other two just chilling on the beach. I was like, yeah, why you do not need an extra pair of hands here, especially I would argue at a time like this when they're off the boat, they're doing they're having their fun time. This is not the because I feel like I I think of it this way, right? When I'm out and about when I'm at a, you know, I go to a pub, a club or whatever. Once I get my first drink, I'm chilling. I'm coasting. I'm doing fine. It's when I'm at the hotel lobby where I'm like, oh, I might need an extra this or that. Or when I'm sitting, you know, like when you're when you're idle and you don't have other plans. But I feel like it's on autopilot at that point. Professional out the door. You just need a good vibes person. And if, if, you know, you're you're you know, Gary looks like he's very keen to be the vibes person. You're fine. Then everything's fine. This doesn't need to happen. Yeah, and and we can just get to that as well, right? Because we do see the beach picnic happen. And here's the thing, okay? So in the past, we have seen where sometimes they require like a whole meal on the beach. And then I actually do agree with Gary, right? That like if we if the chef is off the boat, then I do think a stew has to be with the chef, right? Like helping figure that out. But mm-hmm. This is not that. They just asked for, like, quote-unquote, American snacks and was like, we just want to be left alone. Is American snacks, like, chips? Like, what, what, yeah, like hot pretzels? dogs, I'm assuming. Hot dogs? Yeah, hot dogs, yeah. barbecue-type stuff. Right. That is easy enough. Like, again, it, the fact that she mentioned it's not specialty cocktails, I'm like, okay, so it's poor hand over. There's no shake it, rotate it, throw the bottle in the air, do a 360. Like it's none of that. So you don't need more more hands on deck or off yeah, deck. Ex- and you can even ask the guests, right? Like to say, this is what we're thinking of taking with you. Is that cool? And if the guests say it's cool, let the damn deck hands do it. And I, again, I will say, I think that a stew and a deckhand should go together to set up everything because that that is the stew's job, right? To make things look nice. I think that's correct. I, I'm not even going to argue that. But the fact that she's doing stretches on the beach <laughs> while Daisy is like, I need an Oreo Drowning. Milkshake. Yeah, I need a grilled cheese. I need a this. I need a that. And a man has just come off the ER, right? Like all of that together. I don't understand how Glenn, as someone's supervisor, isn't noticing that, right? And seeing the like issue here. Well, especially, and we haven't, you just mentioned it, the one guest having to go to the ER and essentially being on a different time than the rest of the guests. Because they're all going to go to the beach and they've asked, hey, can you leave out a spread for them? So make sure there's food for when they come back from the ER. And then later ask them, well, do you want to go to the beach? They're like, yeah, we'll probably go. But for now we're chilling. Can I get a espresso with some cinnamon in it? Can I get this? So there's clearly people here that still need to be helped Mm -hmm. as well. So I feel like even if your thought was we need to do the split and you are valid, which I would think that your head stew would know better because they're the one in the thick of it every time. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, but even if you think you're right, you got to go back to the drawing board where it's like, oh, there's two members of the party who have literally been absent for 12, 13 hours and have had a horrible time waiting in a waiting room for the ER. So and and they're friends of the primary who wants them taken care of. Make sure there's people there to take care of them, because I don't think the primary John would have been like, why isn't there more people helping us here? He literally wants his friend taken care of. So take care of the friend. And you can say we're just splitting time. Like, what do you need? Right. Because then Again, we communicate. <laughs> oh, seriously. And then we get this like really shady edit. Right. Of um, D- when Daisy's pushing back to Glenn, because we get this shady edit of like Daisy, quote unquote, slipping up of saying, like, where is the ice? when Alex just like wasn't looking with his eyes open and secondly when she was sleeping in but it's that she was on her mandatory two-hour break they all have to do mandatory breaks uh sometimes the head um of each team doesn't take it like Gary Colin Daisy and Aisha won't take their breaks because you know they're they're not 
it's like exempt versus non-exempt employees, mm-hmm. basically. So it makes sense. But she was on break because she had done a good job managing her team. But then all these other people have to show up and like mess up this stuff. So I'm just really getting pissed off at Gary because I feel like he has some like weird axe to grind uh, and like show his like alphaness. And uh, Glenn is kind of just following along with the deck hand. And again, I feel like this happens a lot uh, on below deck where uh, they don't really see the interior and their worth and their work. So they'll just be like, it's just serving cocktails. And it's like, that takes so long. Yeah. I will say, I feel like the captain, and this is again, me watching for the first time. I feel like Glenn was making it sound like they were going to have the worst time without Gary. Without Gary, the operation fails. They went through an entire charter. No problem. The only issue being the yacht itself had engine problems mm. and then second oh the guest said there was no toilet paper and towels what they're like there, there was but they were so, globs right so that was the biggest issue to me glenn is overvaluing gary and i think gary's obviously good morale and and specifically for glenn it's kind of like mm-hmm. that security blanket that yes. oh gary's here i don't yep. need to worry but i do think there is some underappreciation cutting down underestimating you can insert anything here would work Mm -hmm. of daisy and the interiors job because i would argue the interior are kind of the face of the operation and the one that you're focused on a lot more obviously gary teaching people how to use the toys is is first of all necessary second of all very important for for the fun off the boat but again I can have fun off the boat solo. I I'm also I'm someone personally who I don't like interacting with a lot of strangers I don't know, especially mm-hmm. if they're not my friends or friends of a friend. Yeah, so yeah. I'd be talking to Gary minimal, and then in the yacht I'm like, can I please have a coffee? Oh, you're the best. Thank you so much. And if they're being nice to me, that's like that's what I want more. So, justice for Daisy. Yeah, one thousand percent. Okay, this is a pro Daisy podcast. Get out of here, everyone else. No, I'm just kidding. But <laughs> it just again, as someone who has been a manager of like five people, like I can tell you, it's it, you have to look at everyone. You can't just pick your favorite. And here's the thing, Puya, Gary and Glenn are actually on that boat full time. Like this isn't just for the show. So that's why it caught. It's causing a lot more. Like I feel like weird dynamics because a uh, Glenn is actually the captain and Gary is actually the first mate of Parsifal. So mm-hmm. that's why it's, it's this like weird again, like bromance. And when they were on watch what happens life, they were just so bromancy and frat boy together that I was, I can't, I can't. So it, it unfortunately <laughs> checks out why I just don't appreciate it. And then, Fair. yeah. And then we, we Charter guests are finally on, right? Whatever. Uh, we <laughs> they're they're a little extra. I'll say that about them. I like the son the best, I must say, because uh he says please and thank you to everything. He's really nice. Espresso martinis. Okay, that's how you know, Puya, if a charter is gonna be extra or not. Because asking for ex- espresso martini equals they're gonna be demanding. Really? Why? Is it like a diff? I'm looking at it right now. Is it just like a, let's see, cold count alcoholic drink, mm-hmm. espresso, coffee, liqueur, and vodka? Is this like bougie? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Yeah. And it's like, it's a few extra steps, right? Like you have to have the coffee and your alcohol. It isn't just like a one or two. Like it isn't just like, let me just put the ingredients together and shake mm-hmm. it. It's like, I need to prepare an espresso and then gotcha. figure that out. So usually this is like the bane of uh, below deck people's existence. <laughs> <laughs> but and and uh, I feel like again they were nice charter guests. I do think that they are demanding. Where they were like, I I lost my Aperol spirits. Please get me another one. I need a grilled tea. Like it would do. So this stuff happens a lot and it's frantic. But as a viewer, it is like quote unquote fun to watch because it's it's a little bit drama, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then we get the tender drama because Gary. Oh my god! So according to like Sardinia law, I guess where they, where they are in Italy, um, you can't have the tender tied to the boat. Cool. Okay. Like you can't drag behind. Like someone has to drive it. 
So because of that, Gary said, well, I'm losing my only deckhand to driving a tender. So the girls will have to learn how to drive it. Yeah, again, then hire a new person. <laughs> like, yeah. get an extra person on ship. And Colin can be up. And Colin is on the on deck. He's not, like, behind or down uh, in, like, as an engineer. So he can help with all of that. Like, get out of here with that. And Gary can help. What's Gary doing? Sitting around. You're pissing me off, Gary. So Hanging I'm again out. on Team Daisy because, uh, da again, Gary uses that as leverage because uh, he's like, look, Captain, I just asked her to do something and she didn't do it. But in reality, we know that's not true. It's that, like, she's losing a whole person while there's demanding people on, on, like, on the boat. It's just, it's baffling how Glenn can't see this. And, and I'm getting, like, irritated because I don't appreciate Gary being so pissy. Yeah, I feel like I was I was taught about something in the last couple of years called the mental load and mm. uh, how saying tell me what to do and I'll do it is not as uh, it is not a solution. If you think about it, because oh, what you're doing him. is your what? <laughs> no, you're so good. Yeah. It's great. All what husbands doing... need to learn. this. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, what you're doing is you're burdening your partner or whoever you're talking to, to essentially use more of their brain function to then tell you exactly what they need done. And then all you do is mindlessly do it. What would help more is if you take the initiative of uh, first, yeah, offering to help, but then also pushing that and not just being like, I asked you didn't say anything. So I'm exempt. I mean, you're watching someone pace back and forth with a quickness and you're chilling on your phone. Surely they could use a hand. Just get up and see what they're doing and see if you can help with anything. And then we get Colin who's like, yeah, what can I do to help? She says, make a milkshake. Man thought you told him to make a seven course Michelin star meal. It's a milkshake. I don't know. I know about having a milkshake, not making one, but it's, I feel like the regular ingredients are there. It's a, it was a cookies and cream. Yeah. yeah. Cookies, cream, milk, ice cream, blend it, throw it in a cup. That's it. And like, it, and it's for like, a kid, the kid's not going to be like, exactly. mm, what, 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 cho what cookies did you use? No, the kids are make thank you. And then go away. So. And the kid was so happy when he got his milkshake. It was so yeah. cute. But I, I will say agreed with what Puya saying and echoing is that sometimes like, Usually emotional labor is a real thing. Look it up, everyone. But like, yeah, sometimes like women definitely get put in this. And I'm not saying it's always women, but usually. I mean, is. in my instance, it was. I yeah. be like, <laughs> like for me, <laughs> Liana, tell me what you need me to do. And she's like, dude, I just worked 12 hours. Like, how about you? take over i was like oh okay uh, i'll learn uh so yeah. yeah we had this exact <laughs> argument not even argument where i was like i got to be a manager at work i cannot be the manager at home so let's figure this out together because guess what it's your house too not yeah because especially for me i'm someone who's very i'm a lot more laid back and and passive so I'm like, okay, I know you prefer things more specifically in a way. So I'm fine with you leading and I'll follow, not realizing that like, yeah, but that also means that she now has to lead this and lead work and this. And that's a lot on the mind. It's like, oh, I want all these things, but it'd be nice if my partner would do some of them to like get there, even though they're like, oh, I don't really care. So it's a good conversation to have. I recommend y'all uh, talk to your people about it. Yes. The mental look load. Up. Look it up. Yeah. Look yeah. it up. <laughs> it's really helpful, everyone. <laughs> it was uh, eye opening but, for sure. <laughs> yes. Listen, my husband now understands much better and does not ask <laughs> as many questions. I'll tell you that. <laughs> but, you know, someone needs to teach uh, Gary that, unfortunately. And it looks like it might need to be a, a woman. I don't know. I pray that men help each other out with this stuff. All right. So, now we have the, the the big thing that is going to happen, okay? We get water sports, which I will say, not to belabor this point, but right, when your work gets to be like, you get to join in on the fun, or you get to join in on the activity. I, I won't say a fun, because maybe it's work for you, Gary, versus you have to just literally serve people. I feel that it, there is a, a big difference, right? Where you get to be like, let me show you how to wakeboard and just like do it instead of being like, 
you don't get to be like, yeah, let me give you an Aperol spritz or an espresso martini and share that together. Let, let's do it together. No. <laughs> so understand. Again, I just feel like Glenn should be pointing this out to Gary. Uh, but of course, we get like really fun water sports time. And this is why I really want to rent. I like I wish I could charter a yacht because it looks so much fun. I can't even swim, but I would do all of this. <laughs> I would enjoy it. I would enjoy it for sure. I would have a good time with it. Yeah, I feel like, you know, obviously the whole debate of your work could be more fun as the one who's just doing water sports. Think of who they keep inviting to dinners. It's not the it's not the the interior. It's it's Gary. Can yes. Gary come to dinner, please? Because at some point in the middle of all this, yeah, you're teaching them, but then you're also getting involved and you kind of become like a plus one on their whole vacation. Mm -hmm. So which is a big deal. And again, my point is that no one job is bigger than the other. So stop I making agree. it that way. Yeah. That that's the issue. Cause I, I'm not, yeah, because I don't ever want it to come off that we feel that. Gary isn't doing it's it's not easy and people I couldn't do anything these folks are doing let's let's relationship building straight. is hard and it's hard work like I used to do that for a living it's no it's not as fun as you think it is you just have to make it look fun but you know anything for the tip so we get the TJ the TJ 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 and little Jacob I think is his name are out on the e-foil and Gary says be careful don't don't run into each other but lo and behold, TJ gets whacked in the head, everyone. Yeah, so little Jacob kind of T-bones uh, TJ with the toy, but then also bails. And I think what, what TJ was explaining, bails and, and then the, I don't know what you call it, the, the boogie board yeah. thing. The fin hits him in the head because it stays, Ella, it goes up because he's jumped off and cuts this man's head open. Oh, my God. And I don't know that we've had this bad of, like, an injury from a guest where they've been gone for several hours. Well, throughout the whole night, right? 12 full yeah. hours. People woke up and they were still not back. Um, the guy needed stitches. Thankfully, he's fine and everything. But this is why I focus on making sand, digging a hole when I'm at the beach and not getting in the water. This is, I don't trust the sea whatsoever. Yeah, I will say again, I cannot swim. And on my honeymoon in Tahiti, um, not sure why, but I, we decided to get our own jet skis as only children. So not we both share one and take turns driving. We got mm -hmm. our own. And it was two hours on the ocean. And I was like, I think this is how I die. Because, uh, listen, I don't, no one weighs that much, but I sure don't. And I was like, yeah, I want to go fast. But yeah, I felt my body, like, just getting, like, pulled back. I lost my backpack. I lost my hat. And, <laughs> and I'm just like, what am I, like, this is how I go. Because I had a life jacket on, obviously. But listen, I'll freak out. The jet ski might hit me. I don't know. But, you know, the point is, like, be careful in the damn ocean, everyone. It's not a pool. Yeah. No. The ocean. Listen. The ocean is its own person. And you have to respect the ocean because the ocean sure as hell doesn't respect you. Absolutely not. That shit will gobble you up, everyone. Wake up. Okay. So, poor <laughs> Jay was, I feel like, a really kind and good sport about it all. And then little Jacob, I think finally realized what happened and immediately starts apologizing and said oh shoot i wouldn't have left because th the production is so shady they love to do cutaways of people doing bad things when something like met like a crisis is happening mm -hmm. you know when gary's seen texting etc cetera, etc cetera. so they were like showing jacob just out <laughs> in the water while this man's head is cut open jacob did not question. give a damn that he just a injured damn. one of his one of his uh party jacob was living his best little life having his cookies and cream milkshake on the sea i mean this kid's living it doesn't care oh i injured a a big man look at this is a story for me to tell the kids back in school <laughs> like, at your big age getting kicked by a priest my guilt as a kid i would have literally my the rest of my vacation is ruined i just injured someone my my vacation is done being brown <laughs> yeah it's like i would just that guilt would just sit on my chest until 
Jacob, uh, sorry, TJ comes back and says, it's completely fine. You're okay. Everything's okay. Let's have fun. I'd be like, okay. I, even still, I feel a little bit, but I'll do it. Okay. Yeah. I, I dropped a mango tin when I was little on my, like, you know, the, the mango pulp tin on mm-hmm. my cousin's toe when I was little. Like, we were both young Ooh. and playing, like, shopkeeper. So, mm-hmm. we, you know, we're like, oh, we got to go buy our mango tin. And I dropped it. And, yeah, to this day, like, I will never forget that I did that to her. And it, she even had her tears were like, it's okay. Don't yell at her. We were, It's not her fault. So, even then, and that's still sticking with me so i get you that our parents will also never let us forget this stuff if we did it but daddy was completely okay i felt and yeah. just did not care <laughs> i don't know wild and then um yeah they did get 90s party Puya, how did we feel about this tacky spice girls i liked the thought in theory I yes. thought in theory this was a fun move, right? It was a fun way to get people involved and, you know, add to the 90s theme of it all. They really started grabbing at straws once they realized, oh, uh, you can be, okay, we need a posh spice. Uh, I guess Gary could be sporty spice. Okay. Yeah. Old okay. Spice. Let's do that. Oh, what was it? What, what did he say? No, no, Old I'm Spice yeah. or what was the other thing Chase said? Creepy Spice or Harry, Harry. Spice. Harry Spice. Yeah. <laughs> Chase is so shady. <laughs> <laughs> no, and they looked horrendous. Okay. Like there's a minor on that boat. And the fact that Gary's walking around just free, free balling it too much. This too much, Gary. Yeah. I saw a little more of him than I'd like to. I just met him too. Yeah, so. and I feel like this kind of stuff works when it's like all women charter guests because they're like, oh my God, show me some more. Uh, <laughs> but when I think it's like a family, I don't know that Spice Girls really was a hit there. But well, again, they loved it though. Yeah, they, they like to do silly things. And I think that, again, for content, it's good. I just think the, the fact that there's four people only. <laughs> Well, that's the thing is like I like that um they th- went out of the box with this one. Mm-hmm. They tried something that was not on the list, and they love the surprise. They love the surprise. I think it was a fun little bit. They love Gary too, so they immediately took to Gary instantly. John got up and danced with Gary a little bit. So the vibe was immaculate. Everyone here was living their best life, but you were missing a posh spice, and I feel like you gave them the the Spice Girls, but one of the letters was missing. So. Yeah, because at first I was like, am I missing? Who is Sp- Posh Spice? And I think Daisy just like didn't want to do it. But Daisy <laughs> should have been Posh Spice. But it is what it is, I guess. So and we, and we will get, I think, more stuff like this. This is just a staple where the uh, the staff will do something um, silly. We get a lot of like strip stripper type moves. We get um, them like act. We have had a play, I think, once. We've had talent shows, like all kinds of things. The poor crew has to do anything for the tip. Literally, I I don't know what they'll say no to. I've yet to figure that out. Once I watched the first charter finish and then they had the tip meeting and they did not like the service or they were not happy with their whatever and the tip was 19 grand, that's when I realized, oh, these are rich, rich people because the tip was 19. The the tip, the next one was 21K. It's like, and then, oh, and that comes to about 2,300 per person. Like, okay, and they're doing this for six weeks and they're chartering, what, about three people, three families Mm -hmm. a week? Like, that's, yeah, I'd do anything for the tip too. That's some nice change. Yeah, and I think if you're attractive, it's a wrap for you. You really have to do anything for the tip. Like, because the, the the charter guests will want you all the time. All right, right. everyone. <laughs> so be careful. <laughs> be careful. Uh, but yes, yeah, so we, you know, we do get some good news to end. Uh, that TJ is back. Everything's okay. Uh, he did get some stitches. ER take forever. Th- things are same all over the world. I'll tell you that. It yep. doesn't matter what type of health care you have, apparently. But, at, you know, 
maybe he didn't have to pay an arm and a leg. Who knows? But with that, you know, we wrap up this episode. We do have some exciting um, things coming up. We're exciting, sad, angry-ish. Where the primary is going to get mad about some bone-in chicken or some meat. some Something with bone-in. Um, Lucy is going to ruin a dress. That I think will be a big deal. Yeah, she like ironed a hole into it or something. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, Lucy, you being a klutz is funny, but you doing this is scary. You're so, messing up the tip. <laughs> I mean, maybe this is where the heel turn happens for for primary John and his chill douchey bro vibes become just douchey bro vibes and then it's an issue. <laughs> I, I do think so, Puya, because I feel like he'll like he he was already getting there with TJ, right? Like asking for updates and stuff. So I felt like it was the volcano was like about to erupt. So let's see, because I think he's he's getting close to being done. Yeah. And then we do get a moment of we'll see like some Gary drama and Colin is going to call him out because uh, Gary looks like maybe he's taking a break, not at the best time. And then Glenn is going to go hard on Daisy about slow service, and we're going to get some tears. Oh, God. Yeah, Daisy was already, like, on the ropes by the end of the episode, just, like, full frustration mode with everything, so it doesn't surprise me that she hits a breaking point. Um, It's going to be tough to watch, I'm sure. Uh, But I will say I'm very excited that Colin calls out Gary, and I'm very here for it. As a former smoker, the the smoker smoke break privilege that – no one gives you, you just take and people accept. It can be very frustrating. <laughs> um, I remember when I used to work the till at the bagel shop, I was the quickest guy on cash we had. I knew all the orders, the shortcuts. I bagged everything quickly. So I would clear a line and then be like, I just took nine customers to your two. I'm going to go for my smoke break real quick and I'll be right back. And That's you don't real. have to work. Right? That's the move. But I've also had it where I'm outside and then someone will come and be like, we're, we're, there's a line to the door. You need to come back in. And they're like frustrated with me. I'm like, all right, say less. We'll, we'll clear it up. But no, definitely that is a privilege that no one gives us, but we take. So I'm looking forward to Gary getting his from Colin. And I think Colin is the only person that Gary's going to listen to. I think that's a big piece of it. That's the Glenn, vibe I get. He's not, mm-hmm. Yeah. Glenn, unfortunately, is like sucking his ass. <laughs> so I don't know that it's going to work. I think they're just like very close. Yeah. Well, that's the thing with um, the vibe I get from uh, Colin, not from Colin, from Gary. Yeah. Is that when he talks about Daisy in his narrative, Daisy never listens to what he has to say, but if she says something, he has to do it. So he, there's that beef there. And then every other person is new, so that their, their opinion doesn't matter. Colin's Correct. like the one person who I think could really speak some sense into him. So we'll see. Yeah, let's see. Fingers crossed, everyone, uh, for that. Anything else uh, from this episode that I haven't talked about? Um, no, I think we covered everything. Um, I feel like we got all the stuff done. A uh, very fun episode. Not going to lie. I'm sad I did the podcast because now I'm sad that I don't get to talk about it next week. So Listen, this is very on. fun. I'm very You're, you're always welcome and you know it. Well, thank you. I will be pulling up at some point. <laughs> yes. Um, we did because uh, Rob loves to ask me about social media. So I just I looked around a little bit and okay. G- Gary was on um, Watch What Happens Live not last week, but the week before, and did share that he hooked up with Kenya Moore uh, from The Real Housewives, um, her assistant. So he did oh. share at, at BravoCon that this mm-hmm. happened. Yeah, her assistant. So she now went on Watch What Happens Live and has called him out and said they have beef because she didn't appreciate how he talked about her assistant. And she's like, why does he need to kiss and tell? It's not cute. And Gary, I think your time is running out on the kissing dun, and dun, telling. Dun. <laughs> so, you know, just keep a lookout on Kenya Moore v. Gary. We'll see. <laughs> what is happening? And with that, you know, I hope everyone, I did a good enough job um, of hosting our fearless leader, our captain. We'll be back next week. No, you know, no more fun for him. All right. It's time. It's time for him to come back. So <laughs> <laughs> before that, though, Puya, where can the people find you? Well, people can find me on Twitter at Puyaism. They can find me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Puya. 
Um, I do make content there aside from podcasts. So you can find me there. Come through, say hi. I would appreciate it. And then if you're looking for me on podcasts, I obviously talk about, like Sasha mentioned at the beginning, I have a 90 Day Fiance podcast, the Hot Mess Express. We cover everything 90 Day Fiance, and that is a lot of mess of its own. I had Mari Forth on with me this past week to talk about 90, and we are about to hit the finale. Next week is the finale on part one of the tell-all, so it's going to be jam-packed. So you can find that. And Mass Singer, we got two more weeks on it, so you can check that out over on the Mass Singer wrap up. Leon and I will be talking about that there. And if you're watching Big Brother Canada, bless you, you've made it this far. Um, we have two more episodes before the show's done tonight and tomorrow. I'll be hosting the Big Brother recap tonight with someone very special who is over here to the to the left of me. <laughs> um, and that's going to be a fun time for sure. And then the finale is obviously tomorrow night, which will be live from Toronto. So that'll be fun to watch. And uh, that's all I got for you here. Sasha. Yeah, and as for me, um, you can check me out weekly, of course, on Mess Magnets, where we talk everything pop culture, hot topics, all the mess, all these celebrities are celebritying. We're talking about it, all right? And um, in addition, uh, on post show recaps, we, I'm covering Queen Charlotte. Honestly, the best Bridgerton show out to date. Check all of that out. And I'm covering the power with um, Jason Reed as well over on Post Show Recap. And I was guesting on a few podcasts. Um, check all of that out. Um, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, just follow me on Twitter at funsize underscore 04 to know everything else I'm up to. Thank you so much, Puya, for stepping in and for, you know, binging and watching all of this. And for all of you for listening. And with that, we'll see you next week. Bye.